There's so many choices, so much stuff to cook out of, you don't even know how to buy it. Well, stick around, I'm going to show you how to buy the right kind of cast iron and tell you what you need to find in it. Happy holidays. <laughs> are fixing to talk about buying some cast iron. Whether you're a first time user or you've been using it forever, everybody needs a tip every now and then and I'm going to go through what I think is the best. Number one thing for buying cast iron, got to be made in the USA. A lot of cast iron that comes from overseas and gets imported in here is made out of automotive blocks. Cheap cast iron will warp, it won't heat even, it'll sometimes even crack, Lids won't fit, skillets will wobble. When you go into a store, and a lot of stores carry cast iron anymore, you can get it at any nearly all major sporting goods stores. Amazon's got them. When you drag that skillet out of that box, and make sure, folks, you drag it out of that box. A lot of times, maybe they ain't even on a box. They just hang in there. You can get one. Let's look for that USA stamp first, and then let's inspect this deal really well. Make sure there's no cracks, no blemishes. I want to make sure that it's not pitted. Now, that's really hard to tell on this preseason stuff, but you look, is there any deep holes in there? Is there any cracks around here? Check the thickness of this outside wall of this skillet. Make sure it's uniform all the way around. Now let's look at this handle. It is attached to this skillet. No cracks, no blemishes, no nothing. Some of them, like this board way here, you can see has a heat ring on it. Now originally that was brought about for many years ago. Why? They were cooking just on solid old iron stoves, wood stoves, and it gave that a little air surface under there so it didn't get quite so hot. You'll say, well, I've got a glass top, I can't use cast iron. You can because we're not doing this right here to it, folks, when we bring it out there and put it on that stove, I promise you. You're gonna slip it on there and you're gonna cook. Now let's talk about that old stuff that you might see I want you to first pick it up, look at it really good, just like you would a new piece of cast iron. But there's one other thing we need to look for. Make sure that it won't rock. Because if it's wobbling, sitting down there, it's usually because there's something like this here in it. We're talking about this old stuff. And I told you sometimes it's not easy to find. Where do you find it? I get a lot at antique stores. That's where I picked up some of them old pieces in the house. This was a hand-me-down. Now, if you got them relatives that got some of this, be nice to them till you get their iron. Look on eBay. Sometimes they got some. You got to make sure what they're selling because you can't pick it up and touch it with your hand. So make sure it looks good and you contact that seller and tell him, say, hey, is this stuff guaranteed? Does it have a crack in it? I want to know if it does. Can I send it back to you? Sometimes estate sales, garage sales, stuff like that. Let's go buy a Dutch oven. Now, I will tell you, folks, I ain't seen no vintage Dutch ovens around here in a long time. Now, you go by the same method when you're buying a Dutch oven, but most of the time these are in a box. They're not hanging on a rack. Get that box, put it down there in the floor, open it up. Soon as you do, here come one of them little salesmen and say, hey, you, you can't do that. You look at them right square in the eyes, give them a mean look, and you tell them, Kent Rollins said I could. I'm going to see if this iron is damaged that's in this box. Now, that lid should go like this here. See it go round and round? That's what it needs to do. If this is a Dutch oven, you gotta make sure that it has this lip on it. I think you can see here all the way around because what does that there for? To hold coals in place. Always inspect well this handle on both sides where it is attached. But I want you to look right here if you can, folks, where my finger is, where this goes around, where this is conformed to fit that oven. Make sure that you don't see no knots in there. Let's look in there and let's make sure there ain't no cracks, no worry in here, no humps, no bumps, no lumps, no contusions, dimples, impressions, or depressions. They're just like that skillet that them walls are uniform all the way around. That mold wasn't tilted a little when they poured it. You got to have this thickness. See where this is attached here and here. Now this is on the opposite side as this one is. That's that way for a reason. Now I've seen them come the other way, and when you be walking along, if they're secured on the same side, sometimes that thing will fall out. You know what happens? Hot cobbler run down your leg. It ain't pleasant. And let's look at these legs. They're here for a purpose, to keep that Dutch oven up off the ground to cook with. Now, 
Some of that old cheap stuff might even be hollow, ain't sealed up good on the edge. Why is that important? Keep setting them down time after time, you know, in the dirt, on the ground, wet. It gets that dreaded disease that is called rust. Then you're cooking with it one day in the backyard and you ain't been paying attention and one of them rusty little appendages there falls off. It's a sad, sad day. Because you go in the house and you get the pistol. You have to shoot it. It's crippled, just like on a cattle drive. As you can see, we've been joined by a little feller here. And bless his heart, he's what you call shoeless. He ain't got no shoes on. You can tell the difference here for sure. This one ain't got no legs. It will set right on a burner, steel, in the house. It will set on one of them glass top cook stoves because it is a smooth bottom. But what did my mama use it for? She baked a chicken in it. Said it was the best thing ever. Now it's got this handy dandy little lid. There's a lot of difference going on here. This one is made that way so it holds coals. This one's for outdoor cooking, Dutch oven, Coals on top, coals underneath. And, oh my gosh, it growed whiskers, didn't it? Them are called drippers. Now, them drippers, what did they do? It's like a self-basting machine. When that steam and stuff got up there, that good flavoring off that baked chicken, it drip, drip, drip back on there. We got two different ones up here again. Now, we have what I call, or I refer to, as a 12-inch shallow and a 12-inch deep. Say I'm going to cook a chocolate cake. I'm going to put it over here in this one. Why? Because it's going to rise as it cooks. It's going to get closer to this lid. Now over here, if I put it in this one, it would end up being pretty close to right there. A 12, you say, what do you mean 12? From here to here is 12 inches. That's what we're talking about. The diameter across here. Now, say you're just starting out and you, you don't know what to buy. You, you really, you're thinking, do I need two? Will one be enough? I'll advice to you, whether you're cooking in the backyard or you're going camping, whichever, I would recommend a 12 inch shallow and a 12 inch deep. If you're feeding over five people or six people, I would get me a 12. That's what most people use. But if you're doing less than that, say it's just you and the wife or just you and the beagle, get you a 10. They make a tin shallow, they make a tin deep. You will have not as many leftovers and you may go hungry two or three days later. So if I was you, I'd go ahead and get the 12. You'll thank me later. Be sure and check out all the stuff that Shan has posted below. And, and guess what? Stick around, they are gonna be some more lessons. So look, make sure you know what you're getting. If you folks heard that, that's what we have known as security here. People try to sneak on the set, the beagle will talk to them, I promise you.